All right. All right, everybody. Uh, I'm Isaiah Desta. I'll be hosting tonight with uh, Shane Bell, who will be your instructor and, and your guide through this workshop. Today, our aim is to create an app with multiple views in React. OK, here at 4Geeks Academy, our goal is to prepare you to, for a career in software engineering. We really want to make sure that you get the fundamental skills you need and we focus on the precise skills that you'll need in the workforce. Shane Bell, you want to take it away? Yeah, sure. Cool. So um, first things first, uh, I've uh, prepped a template. I did some of the uh, some of the work ahead of time for you guys so that we can actually focus on uh, building out the core functionality of this app. Um, let me get this screen share up. So cool. Um, yeah, the uh, uh, the template for what we're doing today, uh, I just linked to that in chat. It's at four geeks, uh, github.com slash four geeks academy slash multi page app seminar with underscores instead of spaces. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I've done a couple of things already. Um, and the very first one is that um, I honestly, I, I bootstrapped a, a little bit of the website and I handled interacting with an API. Um, you can, uh, if you really, really want to dig into it, uh, there's some uh, very exciting uh, uh, regex in there. Uh, and I did step through and comment how some of this stuff, uh, some of the internals of this works. Uh, we are going to be focusing on uh, building the, the core of the app, though. So, cool. Um, so right now we've got an app uh, that uh, you can search for. Uh, you can search for books, and it will actually load the. Uh, uh, it, it's not actual PDF books. I'm using uh, the Open Library API to get information about the books. Um, and you know, sharing the uh, the PDF for like I, I do own a copy of this book. Sharing the PDF would probably be piracy, and um, you know, uh, I shouldn't. Uh... <laughs> I shouldn't uh, encourage piracy. The um, NSA is watching. <laughs> um, our goals today are going to be building out uh, the actual pages of this application. Because right now, all there is is the home page. All it does is the search functionality. What we want to do is uh, uh, build out a library page where we can like if, if you saw when i searched for um uh a book uh and let's go with design patterns that's another good programming book uh and it might actually help if i go um looks i just discovered uh an interesting bug um so yeah like if we if we click this add to library button what we want to happen is when we go to the library we want that book to be part of it uh, and Jose, go ahead. What's your question? Um, one second. I don't. Uh, let's... Can you hear me? Yes. Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a. Uh, you said it's a library. How how did you pray? Uh, library should go here. How did you call it? The book. Uh, um. App? I just, uh, the, okay, so the, I'm just calling it book app. The library is just going to store books that we're, we're interested in. Um, I could actually, like, if you... Okay, but it, it, where, is it, where are the books located? Um, we're getting them from, a, uh, from an API called uh, the Open Library API. Open Library. Um, uh, yeah. And those are uh, non-copyrighted books? Um, so it's, it's, it's not... not... It's not actually the actual books. It's all, all it is is really information about the books. About the books. Okay. Okay. I get yeah. it. I get it now. So the information yeah. about the books, so that it simulates uh, uh, what a library would would look like if they were really yeah. PDFs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, they do evidently have the ability to search inside, but I have not messed around with that yet. So uh, that functionality is not part of the. Uh, 
Oh um, man, that's nice. Can you make it big? Oh, that, or is that Open yeah. Library website? Uh, this is the Open Library website. Um, oh, okay, okay. So I'm using their API. Um, they're part of the Internet Archive, so. Oh, yeah, I'm familiar with the Internet Archive. I got a lot of great stuff up there. Wow, this is cool. I love it. <laughs> Thanks for, for allowing me to get my question. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'll shut up now. Man. <laughs> Cool. Um, our other goal is we want to have a a way to see details about books that we uh, that we have either in our library or that we searched about. So we're going to want to be able to visit like slash, uh, our website slash book slash some sort of book ID, uh, and then just get the details about the books. I have another question. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, but you don't get upset. Did you use ChatGPT at all? I have not used ChatGPT at all. You have not? Nope. Does, um, why, you, you feel like you don't need to, or it'll probably, dry, it'll probably do? Um, so, I mean, I've been, yeah. I've been building websites and writing code since, uh, like, so you, 2010, so. Wow, 14 years, a yeah. long time, dude. Gosh, you look yeah. like you're only 20 years old. <laughs> I, I've been... You start when you were 10 or what? I've been told I look like uh, I'm in my mid twenties since I was yeah. like fifteen. So, uh, so oh, since, since you were fifteen, you've been programming? <laughs> oh no, no, no! I've been told that I look like I'm in my mid twenties since I was yeah. uh, in like my. Uh, but how about how long? Routine, you, so. so how long have you been programming? I mean, you're in ten years. Um. So the first website that I built was in 1998. Okay. Um, I it was just you know a hobbyist project. Um. But uh, yeah, I've been programming. Since you were like what, fifteen? Yeah, I learned my first programming language when twenty. Uh, oh uh, God, how how old was I in two thousand eight? Uh. Yeah, I mean, oh, two thousand eight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. But like, I wasn't interested in a career in programming at that point. Yeah. Are you an official programmer now? Do you work for a company? Um, I actually mostly freelance at this point and uh, and teach with four geeks. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, okay. let's get that. focused and get back on track. My bad, my bad. Cool. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, um, we're going to start with explaining how like we have the ability to actually visit pages at this point. Um, so let's quickly go over how that works, and uh, before we get into actually building out our actual pages, um, we're using a. Uh, a tool called React Router DOM or React uh, React Router, um, and we have built out a what they're calling a browser router. Uh, they have got a a whole bunch of different ways that you can set up your multi-page apps. Uh, the browser router allows us to uh, access the web uh, the website like a traditional website. Oh yeah, let me. Uh, is that better? Yes, that works. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Uh, so we can access uh, like this book directory where we want our book detail pages to go. We can access uh, our home directory, which is where the root of the site is. Um, and the way we do this is we add these objects to the browser router. Uh, so like the, uh, the forward slash element returns this component here, this home component which we've defined in this file. Um, and it's honestly a little bit spaghetti, but um, let's not worry about that too much. So yeah, uh, our library element is served by this, or our library page is served by this. Um, and then we're going to be focusing on these two routes. So, Cool. Um, I've separated the uh, the because a page is just a fancy component. So, like, if we look at this home page, it's it's a React component. Uh, and if we look at if we actually scroll down to oh, actually, it's right here at the top. Uh, so, when the search results are on the page, all we're doing is we're mapping in uh, these book components. But that take information about the book and display it. Um, so um, if I search for this, we've just built a 
Uh, like these are a component that exists already. So page is just a component that is built by the composition of other repeated repeatable elements or repeatable components. Cool. So let's hop in. Let's build the library page. Um, and let's add this to the app the library. Let's go with design patterns as well. Uh, we'll add that to the library. And then we'll hop over here to the library page. And we're going to start by making a new JSX file. Um, library.jsx. JSX, uh, for anybody that is not familiar, is a special format that allows us to have JavaScript and HTML kind of side by side in the same file. Uh, so we can build our functionality and build what the actual page looks like in kind of the same place. Um, every component and every page that we're going to uh, build is going to be very similar. We're going to start with a function, and this function has to return valid HTML. So. Um, uh, I'm going to start by returning a um, an empty tag. This is a React thing. It's uh, you're only allowed to return one base element, so I'm just surrounding everything in an empty tag, and that way I don't have to add in a bunch of extra divs. Uh, and the final thing is we need to remember to export this, so. Uh, if we export our library, we then can then go and hop back into the uh, main.jsx file. And instead of serving this h1 element, we can import library from pages slash library.jsx. And we can serve our library component. Uh, and then if we visit slash library, we can toss in some arbitrary stuff here. Uh, and it'll start showing up on our page. Okay, uh, another thing. I'm going to be copying and pasting some uh, some stuff uh, a lot because honestly, like programming, a lot of it is copying and pasting. Um, so, like, yeah, we're we're going to want access to the central application store, uh, which uh, we're able to use through a hook called Use Bookstore uh, because. I find it incredibly funny. And so, yeah, we have access to this store here. Um, this store is it just handles uh, some of the core functionality of the app, um, mostly the the search functionality. Um, but yeah, we speci we pretty specifically want the library here, though. So, I'm sorry. Yeah. What language are we looking at right now? These like library, known books, search. That that's uh, is that a uh, JavaScript? So yeah, every um, this uh, this JSX file is both JavaScript and HTML at the same time. Yeah, I heard you. I heard you. No, yeah. I, heard you, I heard what you mentioned earlier. I just so, wanted to make sure. Okay, JavaScript. So this JavaScript. stuff is JavaScript. This stuff is HTML. Right, right, um, right. I see it. Mm -hmm. But then okay. it's going to get a little bit weirder because inside our HTML, we can do this squiggly brace stuff, and then we can put JavaScript in there. Um, Without, just to without, without using a script tag, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um, and if you want to see the, um, so like if we hop over to here uh, and inspect our page, um, and 
let's zoom in here. Uh, it's actually doing some uh, some magic for us, or this uh, this template is doing some magic magic for us. It's actually injecting a script tag into this page, uh, and it's uh, compiling a lot of the stuff uh, oh, to you. Uh, normal HTML and, and JavaScript. Cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, we've got this library object. Um, let's do, um, and just so that you can actually see what in this, uh, what, what this uh, library object kind of looks like, uh, let's just toss it in there. Uh, we'll toss it in some code blocks. Ah, uh, yeah, I reloaded the page. So, um, this is going to be much easier if I just show it to you in the browser. Uh, so, let's see, that was JavaScript, the good parts. Let's do that. What about automate the boring stuff with Python? That's another, uh, that's another good one. I have that book. Yeah. Uh, this is actually the book that I learned Python from. So. Oh, thank you. That's good to know. OK. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. So if we hop over to the library, uh, you can see that you know, this uh, incredibly gory stuff on the page. This is the library object. Um, and it's just going to be way easier if I hop over here uh, and kind of show you the shape of the data. Um, because there's a bunch in here. So this library is an object. Uh, its keys are these open library numbers. And the value at each of these keys is a book object, essentially, from the uh, the open library right. API. All the data from the book that, you, that you're displaying. Yeah, it's, it's the data about the book. OK, um, get it. Get it. Uh, go ahead, Carlos. Uh, yeah, just a, a quick question. Uh, is that you can see like the 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 JSON JSON uh, value of, of the library? Yeah. That. Is that an extension for for the React components? Um, for your browser. Uh, this thing here. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that is, if you go to React.dev, um, there are. Um, this is not where I wanted to go exactly. Uh, do, do, do. uh da, da. maybe here. Uh, I've got a direct link somewhere. Uh, but yeah, there are, there's some React Dev Tools. Um, nope, that is, uh, Do, 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 do. Um, okay, I will have to grab a, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, man, the search was not doing, uh, uh, working well for me. Uh, but yeah, it's React DevTools. It is incredibly useful. I highly recommend it if you're going to be building anything in React. Um, it's just, uh, it, it, it makes a huge, huge difference, um, because you can do things like this. You can look at each of your components. Like you can see that the, uh, the route provider is nesting a huge amount of stuff in here. Um, and then you can, uh, you can go and you can actually look at the, the data that builds your application. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Smitha? Uh, tell me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, please. Um, and if you're, if you're talking, you are muted, so. So when I try to use that uh, React dev tools in, mm -hmm. in local development, it does not work. 
I be, if 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 an application is deployed and I I can definitely use the dev tools and the components and the profiler tabs there. But in local, it does not. I always thought that I could I would never be able to use it. But now that you're yeah. using it, I'm glad to know that I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't. I. Yeah, uh, I'd have to I'd have to look into into that. I don't I don't know enough about the internals about the dev tools to to be able to troubleshoot it really nicely. But um, uh, I wonder okay. if there's like some setting in here that you might Maybe. be able to. Okay. Yeah. Um. Also, make that uh. Let's make that a bit bigger. So. Um. But yeah, let's um. So yeah, uh, the library is an object that contains um, uh, all of our books. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to um, uh, and Jelena, it will be uh, it will be recorded and that will be up on uh, the Four Geeks YouTube. So. Um, but yeah, uh, the library is an object, uh, which means that it's we're going to have to do some uh, some fancy stuff to actually be able to uh, interact with it as uh, an iterable or as something that we can can loop over uh, easily. Because um, I'm I'm like ninety nine percent certain that. Uh, uh, objects don't have the um, the map method. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, um, which means that we want to be able to convert this object into a uh, 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 into into like an array. So, um, <laughs> yeah. And frankly, I hadn't thought about that ahead of time but we can we can work around this uh so we're going to work around this by using a couple of things from react the first one is we're going to use use state um so uh use the use state hook allows us to make a value that react will care about when we um uh, when it updates. Uh, the way that we have to do this is, um, well, we use the use state hook and it gives us back two things. The first thing it does is it gives us a variable that's uh, that holds the data that we want and it gives us a function that changes it and tells React that, hey, this value has changed. So, uh, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to use use effect um use effect is a function in react or it's a, a hook in react that runs a function every time some data changes so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pass it a function i'm just going to have an empty function initially um this function is or this first argument is the function that react runs and then the second argument here is the list of values that when that changes, um, it'll rerun the function. So we're going to just toss library in there uh, because we want this to to run every time library changes so that when we remove book from our library, it, it re is removed from our shell. So, um, so what this function is going to be doing is we want to iterate over this object. So, um go 
want of or in? I think I want. Yeah, I think I want uh, this. So. Uh, and I'm just going to do this, say. Um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be cute. Shelf will be the array that we're building. And then we'll just push the book onto the shelf. Uh, and then when that's finally done, we will set books to our shelf. Uh, and then we will books.map. Um, which is another another function like use effect. It takes a function as an argument. These are called high high level functions or higher order functions. Um, so yeah, basically what we want to do is we want to um, write a function that takes a book as an argument. Um, I'm also going to toss in this uh, this index here because uh, we'll need that momentarily. And then it's going to bring back or return a, a book card object. Uh, it might help if I do an angle brace here. Uh, and I quickly have to just look at the book card object that I'm doing here. So this book card has the props book and the key index. Um, so we can just copy and paste that. So yeah, really all this use effect is doing is when my library changes, uh, it sets the books for the page. So let's pop here. And we've got some issues. What do we have for issues? I'm not getting any errors. Let's try refreshing the page. Hmm. Okay. This is actually a spot where React DevTools is going to be coming in super handy. Ah, uh, so I'm not actually putting a book object here. Uh, I accidentally put the key. So this isn't going to be let book in library. This is going to be let book of library. Uh, oh, library is not iterable. Okay. We do want in, uh, but what we can do, and I'm going to rename this to um, OLID because um, what I have here isn't actually a book object. It's an open library ID. Um, and let's go much better. Cool. So yeah, we've got our, our book object. Let's see if when I remove this from the library, mm, it's not updating. Um, let's do that. Let's add some not programming books. Um. Swapping images is a bit slow here. OK, so what's happening here is when we try to remove it from the library, it's not actually updating. It's not actually running this. Which is probably because a library is an object. Hmm. I'm going to mark that down as a uh, doesn't run when library changes. Uh, that might be something that we'll have to uh, have to circle around or circle back to because based on my understanding, this should be running. 
but React is obviously having trouble understanding this um, or understanding when this changes. And I'm using, uh, for my application storage, I'm using something called Pinia. Oh, sorry, not Pinia. Sorry, I'm using something called Zustand. Uh, sorry? Shane, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Shane, if you like, we could try ChatGPT. It might give you the answer real quick, unless you want to not huh. do that for whatever reason. I I kind of want to keep the uh, the momentum up, so okay, okay, we can just go gotcha. back to that. Sorry, boss. <laughs> uh, hey, no problem. I thought I'd ask. Um, but yeah, I'm using a store called Zustand. Um, the the reason I, I my brain went to Pinia is Pinia is basically the equivalent of Zustand for uh, for Vue, which is another front end uh, library very similar to React. Uh, and I've been doing stuff in Vue all day, so I I immediately went to Pinia, and um, and that was that was what my brain said. So cool. Um, but yeah, I don't. At the moment, I don't really want to dig into why Zustand um, or why elements from the Zustand uh, uh, store aren't updating properly here. Um, it's kind of out of scope for this, anyways. Cool. Uh, so we've got a, a basic page right now. Um, our next thing is that we want our book detail pages, um, which is going to be a little bit more involved, honestly, um, because like this was just uh, this was just taking a component that I had already built, mapping it in, explaining how the mapping works, and so on and so forth. Um. But we're actually going to have to go build a new book detail component. Uh, and we're going to have to figure out how to go from, uh, or basically how to make it so that there's routing for all these different books. Um, and then we'll probably have to go back to the book card and then make a link to the actual book page. But yeah, let's quickly look at what a book looks like. So uh, let's not change the key there. So this book object, um, which does not look very good when you make the screen smaller, uh, it has a cover edition key, which is what I'm using for the uh, uh, for the canonical ID, I guess, of an item. Um, ooh. I actually hadn't uh, caught that they, it has this uh, key field. Do all of them have that? Do, do, do. It looks very much like all the books have this key field. I could be using that. Um, but yeah, so I'm identifying the books by this field. Um, when I'm building these uh, these objects, or when I'm building the library and the known books object, uh, this is what I'm using as the key. Um, and then I'm storing this book in in there. Uh, I'm getting the cover image also by using this and a function that I wrote that just generates the URL I need. Um, but in our book details, we've got some, some useful things. Um, like we've got our uh, publication date. Um, Wow, this actually might be the addition of uh, Automate the Boring Stuff that I learned on, because that was like 2008. Um, cool. cool. We've got some ratings. Uh, to, to, we have uh, the subject. One second. I'm definitely not looking at automate the boring stuff. This is uh, this is Snow Crash. Not uh, not. <laughs> I'm looking at this book. Very different book. I was, I got down to the subject. I'm like science fiction, huh? That's weird. Uh, but yeah, we got the title. We've got um. Let's actually hop over to JavaScript. The good parts because uh, these objects are there. There's some weirdness with this but yeah so like this book has a subtitle so yeah let's let's make a a page that displays a book object um and 
we're going to do um I'm just going to do console.log a uh a book object so that we have something to work with. Uh do, 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 we want library.jsx. Um and let's uh let's just console.log library. Let's let's console dot log uh, this whole thing instead of a full object. And let's JSON dot stringify it first. <laughs> Much better. Um, let's see, one, two. Okay, cool. So uh, it looks like we've got guards, guards as our object. Do, 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 do. Uh, so const uh, demo book. Actually, we'll do this. We'll actually do this on the new file. Uh, this page is going to be the book page.jsx. And let's actually get our book page displaying this. And then I'm just going to do const demo book. Uh, now nah, I'm going to do this here. That's just going to make it easier on me. Oh, oh, okay. Um, let me. No, oh, I don't want this to be super narrow. Uh, we're just going to grab a book from the bookstore. Uh, I want. The open library store. Uh, I want known books. Um, and yeah, I want I want known books, and I want to do const book set up. Oh. I did squiggly braces. Uh, book set book equals use state. Um, this is going to be an object. And then we want a use effect uh, because I want to populate that with the book that we're working with when the page loads. Uh, let's. Uh, do, do, do. components. Let's look at this book. Um, we'll do we'll do this one because it's got a subtitle. So I'm just hard coding in a book right now. Um, so it'll we'll set book to be known books. Uh, this book here. So when we hop over to the book app, and then we go to slash book, and then we look at our book page, 
and we run this, uh, we can see the, the state of book, or the, the book state is this one book object. Uh, we'll get into how to actually, how we're actually going to uh, dynamically have books, um, or like, so that we're going to look into how when we change the URL, we can have different books, but, um, cool. Uh, and let's, okay. Um, we're going to return a book details here, where our book is equal to book. Uh, we don't need that image prop anymore. Cool. Yeah, I'll toss that there just to make the linter happy. Um, and I'm going to copy this because we're going to, honestly, we're going to need most of the stuff from that store anyways. Cool. Okay, so a book page. First thing that we're going to want to do. Like, we want the, the title of the book. So... Um, and let's hop over here so that we can actually see things. Uh, so that's going to be book.title. Uh, but you'll notice that, um, uh, JavaScript, the good parts has a subtitle. So we're going to want to do something about that as well. Um, And we can just use a ternary operator. So if, if there is a subtitle, uh, we'll want to do probably like a colon there, a space. And that, and if there isn't, we'll just have an empty string. So yeah. We've got our book title. Uh, we want an image. Um, so the source for the image is going to be uh, get cover URL, because I wrote a little utility function uh, for that. Cool. We've got our cover. Let's quickly look at this. Because we want we want to actually have actual details about this book. Um, so let's see. Let's go for published date. I think. Yeah, yeah. We'll do we'll do published date and then um, first published in. And we can sort out uh, actually handling the layout uh or making the layout prettier here so we'll do an unordered list uh we're going to at least want like i don't know five list items so um was that published i have already forgotten the key Published, published date. Cool. Um, okay, so this was published here. Um, we probably want some more details. Hmm, there's no, there's seemingly no order to the published place. I'm pretty sure that uh, it was first published in Cambridge. Um, I'm not 100% certain. So maybe let's not get the published location. 
Um, we'll do last published and then first published. So book dot first published uh, is obviously not the first published year. Um, okay. Uh, oh, we completely skipped author. Um, where are authors? Okay, so author name is an array. So let's handle that. Um, so written by written written by um book dot author name dot join i believe is the function we want um cool um and let's actually do uh, let's Let's keep it consistent where we're doing the um, hmm. I think the the emphasis we want to be on the actual data. So let's let's put the emphasis tag here. And I think that looks reasonably good. Um, so yeah, re uh, realistically, a lot of this stuff is we've already got the data. We just need to get the, um, oh, I didn't realize this was published by Pearson. Mm. Um, yeah, we've got the data. We just need to figure out how to like display the data nicely at this point. Um, So, and there is so much data. Um, honestly, let's let's build a rating system for this. Why don't you draw it out first, like the way you want it to look? Uh, and then just, you know, like... Well, I mean, yeah, th that is honestly a step that a lot of people do take. Um, Wireframing is super, super important. Um, yeah. I was, I'm just saying since you're, since, uh, since, it seems like you... Like you came in today without having the idea of how you want it to look. You got all, like you said, you have all the data. So <laughs> I, I want to make it look pretty, so, but whatever. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, join is not a function. So um, that is, I got this backwards probably. Nope. Um, I did this elsewhere. I do this here. Ah, okay. That's what happened. Okay, so this is book details line 140. Uh, no, not line 140. Uh, Book.jsx. Hmm. One second. I've got. Cannot read properties of undefined. Reading join. Cannot read properties of undefined reading zero. Uh, do I? Let's do. Let's just grab the first element of that array. Much better. Okay. Da, 
da, da, da. yeah, rating system. So let's quickly hop over to um. Let's see, CDNJS, that's what I was looking for. I'm just going to grab a link tag here. Um, you can just copy it off this page. Um, and in our HTML file, uh, I'm just going to add this incredibly long tag. And that's going to give us access to uh, to Font Awesome, uh, which is being slow. Uh, and because we want uh, we want star icons, so let's see. We want a solid star and we want a regular star um and let's quickly look at this book object do to do do to do ratings average ratings average just looks like an integer number which okay um, and it's ratings count five, so it's out of five. Let's see, three plus four is seven, plus five is 12 divided by three. So it actually could be a. Let's. Um, I'm super curious. I'm not convinced that it's. Uh, let's see, that one is an integer. Okay, ratings average is not always a an integer. Okay, cool. That is that is something I can work with. So, um, if we want our uh, okay, so we want our rating to be uh, displayed. Um, hmm. yeah, okay, so like, let's say, um, oh, I kind of want to like, uh, let me, let me just mock this up quickly, three, four. And then the last one would be FA regular. So we want to kind of look like that. Um, and these all need to be class names. So what I want to do is I want to make it so that I can put in a rating number. So like I want a, a function that uh, I put in a rating number. So uh, const uh, get rating HT, uh, HTML. Uh, this is a function. Uh, it takes a number uh, or num stars, and then it returns uh, some HTML. So what I can do here, uh, I'm going to need these two, is get rating HTML for book dot, uh, what was that property? Uh, ratings average. Ratings average. Cool. OK. So ratings average is the number of stars. Um, we're not going to worry about half stars. So uh, we want const stars to be equal to math dot round our number of stars. 
Uh, and then we'll want a const. Uh, not a const. We want a let HTML equal. Uh, this is going to be just a blank string for now. Uh, we'll do this the kind of messy way. Um, okay, so uh, we want i is going to be zero. Uh, i is less than a number of stars. Uh, i plus plus. So we're just iterating over um, the, or we're iterating up to the number of stars. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, I just realized that I can absolutely do this uh, as this. So let's do HTML.push this. And then for let I equal number of stars, uh, I is less than five because that's our maximum number of, uh, I think this has to be less than or equal. Uh, ATARs, where is ATARs? Uh, oh, I definitely have starts instead of stars. Um, and this also has to be stars. Again, stars, not starts. Um, and then HTML dot push uh, this HTML. And then we can return our HTML. OK, I have an off by one error here. Um, this is a super common error. Um, off by one errors are um, I don't know, no need to be sorry. Um, honestly, a, a lot of the a lot of the time, uh, it, it can be really helpful to have somebody uh, even if they don't really know your code, to just like look over your shoulder and be like, because like I've had people catch so many typos that way. Um, I've caught so many typos that way. Cool. Okay, we've got our book details. Um, let's just add a one more thing, which is a div dot uh, buttons. We'll call it, um, and then. Uh, honestly, I'm going to copy this from the other one because, or from the book card, um, because I already did some good work there. Uh, but I will step you guys through it. Um, there's going to be. I need to make this uh, handle click function again. Do do do. do. Okay, cool. So. Um, this button displays add to library if it's not in your library, uh, and it displays remove from library if it is. So you can see that it toggles between those two states. So the way it does this is first in the class. Uh, if it's in your library, I use the gray button. And if it's not in your library, I use the green button. Uh, and then. The on click is the handle click function. And then finally, if the, the book is in your library, it says remove from library. Otherwise, it says add to library. And then the handle click button just sees if the book is in your library. If it is, the function on it is remove from library. Otherwise, it adds to library. Um, and this could also be a ternary operator like these three. Um, your other choice there is to have a ternary operator and then two buttons, which honestly is probably easier to read uh, in hindsight. Um, it would be like uh, is in library book. So a ternary operator, you start off asking a question. 
Uh, if it is, you return one thing, and if it isn't, you return another. So if it is, in this case, uh, we'd be removing this from there, and we'd be displaying it like this, uh, minus the quote marks. Uh, do, do, do. Let's grab this button. Uh, otherwise, we would do prime marty. Um, I absolutely clicked the wrong one. Um, and yeah, I'll uh, I'll make a branch on the um, on the template repo. Um, I have, ah, success, not primary. Although, honestly, primary looks good. Cool. And then we can just do this here, and then this here. Yeah, honestly, this is probably easier to read. So we'll go with it this way. Um, it'll be both ways in this file because uh, the other one has the one button that has the multiple ternary operators. But yeah, this is, you can see that this is JavaScript. You can see that it's based on checking if a book's in your library. And if it is in your library, you get the HTML here. Otherwise, you get the HTML here. So, cool. Awesome. So we've got this page done. Now we need to make it so that when we visit, like, um, let me grab the cover edition key. We want it so that when we visit this page, we get that book. Uh, which means we're going to have to hop over into React Router. And we're, um, let's see, we're using the Create Browser Router version. Um, but we want a hook called Use Params. Use Params is kind of misleading uh, because most of the time when you're talking about uh, parameters with uh, with websites and with browsers, uh, you're talking like this question mark search equals something uh, or other. Most of the time when people are talking about URLs and parameters, these are the parameters. Uh, in this case, use param is getting the parameters out of the path. So uh, let's hop over here. Um, I need to grab this uh, so that we can go see this here. And let's go look at the book page. Um, so we want to const. Um, we don't actually have that there. We need to go do one thing before we do this. Uh, that's in main.jsx. So we want slash book slash OLID because we're using the OLID for the book. Um, and it's returning a book page. So here, now we can uh, const. Um, so use params gives us an object with key value pairs for the, um, the parameters. So I can say, OLID is equal, or I can destructure that object and get the OLID out of it. And we can use use params. And then we can just pass this in here. Um, and then hopefully, um, 
when we refresh this page, we get JavaScript, the good parts. Um, but let's hop over to our library and see if we can do that with any of the other books or if we have a, have a bug. So slash book slash this, and we get automate the boring stuff with Python. Cool. Uh, let's fix it so that the book card uh, links to the actual uh, the actual book. So you have access to the actual book via the API. Yeah, yeah. So it'll actually link to the book page that we just generated. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so our href is going to be slash book slash dollar sign squiggly brace. Uh, book dot cover edition key. Um, we're going to be reusing this uh, because let's also make the heading. Uh, so yeah, when we go to uh, one second, let's go here. Let's refresh this page. Let's add this to the library. Oh yeah, this doesn't uh do, do, do. okay, cool. So now we can go back and forth. We can look at our library. Um and we can go to the actual books in the library. Um also I have uh I have this printing literally within arm's reach. Um <laughs> or the, the 2007 printing, literally within arm's reach. Um yeah. Cool. So yeah, we've got on these these first two uh these first two things kind of out of the way. We can add and remove things from our library. Um what if we add uh um can you create? Can you quick, create quickly something so we can view the book and flip to the pages? Um, that would require me having the information that I don't actually have. Okay. Um, yeah, I okay. just uh, I don't I don't have access to the actual information from the books. I'm just using uh, the the data. It, this is this is just metadata about the books. Right, 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 um, right, right. Yeah. Um. Cool. So you said, you said, I'm sorry, but you said the you can get you said you had access to the actual book at, through the API, right? Uh, no, I've got access to details about the book. So like this book object, That's it. yeah, yeah, just the metadata. So like this book, this book data or this book object is all that. Uh, right, right, right. So my question is, if you wanted to get the actual uh, data from, I mean, the actual information on the book, like the, the pages, is that possible? Like through what you're doing, does that mean? Not through the the what I have. Uh, no, the Open Library the, API doesn't okay. uh, doesn't give me uh, okay, that kind I of know stuff. That. Yeah. Doesn't is there any other API that might be able to to do that? Um, I can't imagine an API like that staying up without the publishers uh, or well, without well, publishers as a, a taking well, it down. Right, right, right. right. It would depend. It would depend if the content is copyrighted or not. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, there are like um, Project Gutenberg. It doesn't have. I don't know if it has an API. Um, okay. But yeah. Uh, right. Okay. So if there was a, if, if, right, right. I yeah. Get, I get it. Yeah, that's the right question. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and there's actually um, there's a a ton of stuff in here that is 100% worth reading. Um, I'm check it out now. And you will you will absolutely find uh, text that exists on Project Gutenberg and other places. Um, so, like, there's a um, there's a repo called uh, CL Mystery. Um, CL Mystery is a way to teach people how to use the command line, um, and uh, because you you have to interact with this. Uh, this information through the command line to, I mean, there are other ways to get around it, but it's best to do it through the command line. 
Um, but if we hop over to like interviews and a random interview, um, the text that is filling out the uh, this is actually from uh, Alice in Wonderland. So um, let's. Uh, yeah, like this is uh, this is from the Toadstool section where uh, where Alice is uh, uh, just entering Wonderland. But yeah, um, honestly, Project Gutenberg is really cool, uh, and if you need yeah. a lot of text to uh, to fill out something, uh, it's a really good place to go. Um, okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, at this point, we. Uh, there, there are a couple of bugs that I know about already. Um, we've seen that. When I remove something from the library here, it doesn't actually update the page. Um, but that's probably getting into internals with um, the... Uh, yeah, that's probably getting into, into internals with... Um, not Penny, a Zoo stand. Um, and there is one thing here. This search box shouldn't show up when um, when you're not on the search page. Honestly, uh, it because uh, I mean it doesn't do anything. Uh, oops. So like if I search for oops, it doesn't redirect me to the uh, uh, that page. Um, but it does actually make the search. Um, so uh, let's see what did what did I get for oops? Um, Where's title? Title, Black House. Um, okay. Uh, also, beautiful oops. But yeah. Um, there's also, it's worth noting that... Um, uh, what if we do uh, Python exercises gently explained? Um, so I've hit the, like, I've, I've hit the search button. Oh, actually nothing. Ooh. Uh, sorry. I just, uh, nothing came back for that search. Um, uh, that's another Alice Weigart book. Um, maybe beyond the basics with Python. Much better. Uh, not what I was looking for, but, uh, much better. Uh, you'll notice that there is a a second. Actually, that one came back real fast. Um, what about uh, the illustrated Alice in Wonderland? Cool. So there's a significant wait here before it it uh make uh, before it updates the interface. Uh, there are a couple of things that we kind of probably want to do. Um, we probably want to clear out the search results when we start the search so that they go away. Honestly, I can do that in like 30 seconds. Um, that is done in Zustand here. So if we hop over to get books by search, uh, what we can do is when we set is loading true, we can also set um, uh, this needs parentheses and squiggly braces. Uh, search results to be an empty array. Uh, and that should fix that problem. Um, so when I switch to this, uh, it instead goes back to the, uh, the other uh, screen momentarily before it actually loads the data. Um, so yeah, that one was a, a super easy fix. Um, but we probably want like a, like we could, um, we could do it so that while it's loading, uh, there's like a, you know, a message saying, Hey, this is loading. Hmm. Because this API is not super fast. But that's honestly, that is probably a little bit out of the scope of what we're doing today. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a note about that here. Uh, because honestly, we got rid of these. 
So uh, I'll put a to do uh, for later. Uh, we want to uh, fix the bug where. Uh, no, that was span.code. That's right. Span.code. Um, where slash light, uh, adding and removing, uh, actually just removing books, removing books while at slash library, uh, doesn't, uh, that's and a pause semicolon doesn't appear to actually remove the book. Um, and then the second thing would be uh, another thing that we'd want to do is add a loading screen uh, while the search results are loading. Uh, and then finally, we'd want it to we'd want to um, either make uh, the search field take you to um, span.code uh, slash uh, the root of the application um, when you search. Uh, out when uh, that's then when you aren't on the home page, uh, do, 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 do. uh, I need this, although it's actually working, it's just complaining at me, uh, or uh. Find a better search page solution thing. Cool. Because, yeah, like right now the search functionality is a little bit weird. Um, it works here. Um, but if you're in your library, and you search for something, uh, the search functionality doesn't work, uh, even though it's actually doing the work. Cool. Uh, honestly, at this point, let's uh, let's open it up for uh, for full questions. And uh, if there's anything that I like skimmed over that um, that you want me to explain better, uh, now is a good time. Cool. Uh, I'm going to open the queue. So, Carlos. Uh, hi. Yeah. So, um, the first bug, the first uh, uh, item in the list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you want to fix the bug where you don't, you can't remove the items. But yeah, you, you used uh, the use effect um, uh, function. Is it a mm -hmm. function? You call yeah. It a function? Yeah. Okay. Use the use effect to push an item inside the library, but you, do you have to do the same thing, like a, a splice, for example, to remove it? Um, so that would be the the fancy way of doing it. Um, right now, what's happening is um, I in this use effect, I'm making a brand new array here, and then I'm putting everything that's in the library into it, uh, and then I set the books uh, state to that, um, which one second. I have some HTML that I can copy that will make that page look better. Um, so, yeah. So I am. I'm just making a fresh array. Um, a better way would probably be. Yeah, um, because the functionality here, uh, let's see, let's look at remove from library. Um, so yeah, 
Uh, what happens here is when I remove it from the library, I make a copy of library. Um, I see if the book is actually in the library. Um, and if it is, I delete the key in the library. Um, I think this is probably why it's not registering. Um, because, uh, let's see, MDN, delete, um, I'm using this, uh, this keyword. And I, I think that, uh, when I, when I put this library, well, actually, no, it's probably not this. It's probably that when I set the library to the new library, um, it doesn't trigger, um, the the thing in React that recognize that uh that says hey this data has changed because it, it's not using a state right maybe yeah um because you you and here in the user fact you're reading a the the state like a book state yeah uh, and in, in the other in the delete operator you. You're not using that state, maybe? Uh, no, because over here I'm using the uh, the Zustan. Uh, uh, okay, so this is this is a situation where uh, the term state is overloaded. The term state is being used in multiple ways. Okay. Um, in here, uh, I'm using the Zustan uh, application state stuff, and then this thing here is a piece of React state. Yeah. Um. So this thing here, I'm pretty sure React is just having trouble telling that this has changed. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, but is uh, it because I mean, sorry? Is it because the, it's by value or by reference that the array is being held there? Um. We don't have to trouble. Yeah. Just throw I yes. um actually here so. Uh, do, do, do. um, okay, so updating, yeah, we've got the, no, this isn't what I want. Yeah, so, uh, Zustand is, isn't triggering the update, which is, um, yeah. Let's see, updating state, let's, man, they are doing this, and yeah, we've got the normal approach. I'm not using Emmer, it's not, it should, like, Hmm. My understanding is that this object changing should trigger a a uh, a reload, but it, or a uh, a refresh, but it's not. Um. Yeah, it's just it's a library I ha I haven't used a huge amount. Um. Uh, and I wish that I had run into this issue before. Hmm. Oh, uh, but yeah, I mean, aside from that, Zustand has been, uh, has been great to work with. Um, would... Yeah. Yeah, sorry, so what, what exactly is Zustand? So Zustand is kind of like a lightweight equivalent to React Redux. Um, so React Redux is a, well, actually, it's not really a lightweight. It's just, it takes a different approach. Um, one of the things that you'll you'll find a lot when you're working with full stack applications that, uh, that get, honestly, not even much larger than this, is you're going to run into situations where you need to pass information and a function to change that information down multiple levels of components. So like uh, this home component contains uh, this book component and I'm passing information into that. And then like that book component could contain or that book card component could contain another component that I have to pass the information into and so on and so forth. Um, and it just, it handling passing that information and those functions uh, down the chain becomes uh, really, really difficult to manage in larger applications. 
this gets around that by having that state no longer be controlled by the components, but that state is its own separate thing that I can access outside of the component tree. So this book has access to the parts of the book state or the bookstore um, that it needs. Um, but I don't have to pass that into it from this homepage. Uh, go ahead, Jose. Uh, yes, um, I will push this. Um, in fact, let me uh, get a dot. Uh, get stash, get branch, seminar, uh, it's March 28th. Okay, get stash, pop, get push, set up stream, seminar, dash, mar, 28, cool. Um, cool. I've just pushed this uh, this up to there. Uh, let's uh, let's grab the URL. So this uh, this URL is the code that I wrote today. Cool. Um, and all you need to do to uh, to run this locally or to interact with this locally is you need to make sure that you have node installed uh and then you can clone this repo locally run npm install and npm run dev um and it'll run on your own machine uh you can also uh if you're on github you can click this code button and then you can start a code space you've got like 40 free hours a month to uh to run with that um, and if you're a student, you get unlimited hours while you're a student with four geeks um, on the four geeks uh, organization. So, um, but yeah, cool. Uh, honestly, at this point, um, yeah. Uh, on, so one of the things that we do is uh, with our students is we have our students developing on uh, on code spaces or in uh, development environments uh, so that we don't have to make sure that everybody's computer is set up in the same way so that they they don't have to deal with all of the frankly getting development environments set up is a huge hassle or used to be a huge hassle and now that we have like dev containers it's it, like super straightforward um but yeah like uh <laughs> i don't want to have to uh um go and uh make sure that i i tell as teach everybody how to turn on virtualization on their motherboards so that they can run a docker container on on their home machine um that would be that'd be no fun uh -oh. <laughs> oh it is uh it's less rocket science it is more well, actually, I guess if, if you imagine rocket science as having a big panel of switches and finding the exact right one to switch. Um, uh, Smitha, go ahead. Hi. OK. So in the future, do you plan on covering like um, properties and events from the child components to the parents and things like that? Um. So that is actually one of the things that I avoided doing by using um, application state management like Zustand or React Redux. Um, but that is um, that is something that you can do by utilizing basically uh, callback functions. So if you pass a, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll toss together a super quick example. Thank um, you. I appreciate so, that. <laughs> not a problem. Um, so let's say that I have some uh, some d data that I have in this home page that I want to um, uh, send in. So I can use a piece of uh, use state here. So I would like to see not just a piece of data being sent, but even like a click event handler, let's just say. Yeah, yeah. Um, it might help if I actually import, uh, 
if I actually import use state here. Um, but yeah, so, um, and I'm going to make a new, um, uh, a test component, uh, dot, to do function. Uh, this is going to return some HTML, uh, and it's going to take two arguments, which are going to be its data and its callback. Um, so this callback function is uh, really where the magic happens when you're doing this kind of thing. Um, So what we'll do is we'll have an H1 where we display the data. Um, and then I'm going to have a button.btn.btn primary uh, where um, that changes the message here. Um, and it's going to have an on click uh, that is that callback. Um, so when I make this component, uh, or when I display this component on the page, I'm passing in the information and the function to actually change it. Um, and you'll all change it at here, simulating like if we had some, uh, an input here. Um, actually, one second, I could do an input real, real fast. Nah, that probably not. Um, Okay. Compone. There, I spelled component correctly. <laughs> okay, so now we need to uh, actually uh, have our test component. So the data is going to be the data variable, and the callback is just going to be the set data here or the set data function. Um, so if I hop over to here, this component uh, now, when I click the change button, it actually changes the information in the child component. Um, but it does that by sending the, um, the data back from, or by running the function that's provided to it from the parent component. Uh, because with React, the parent components and their state is, is kind of authoritative. So like if you're passing information down into the component uh, and you want that child component to be able to change it, you also have to pass in a way for that component to change it, um, which was why we passed in the callback. OK. OK. So. Basically, what I'm understanding is the test component initiates the callback yep. uh, and passes that string yep. into the parent. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, this is this is why application state management is a thing. Uh, <laughs> because this is uh, one of the, the simpler examples of that. Uh -huh. um, and you already have to, like, you have to keep a ton of stuff in mind to make it work. Uh, or a ton of stuff in your head to keep it, uh, to, to make it work. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Sorry, quick okay. question about this. Uh, yeah? Do you need to follow a certain hierarchy? Like, uh, the parent can only interact with the direct child, or can you skip? Um, so you can, uh, like, you, you do have to continue sending it down the chain. So, okay. like, if, um, uh, if I tossed in, uh, there's a special prop called children. Um, so I'm going to toss this. Uh, no, actually, I don't want to do it as uh, as children. Let's copy and paste this as test component two. 
Uh, and then we'll export test component two um, as this gets more and more uh, uh, complicated. So we could just, like if we wanted to basically make it um, the same thing, uh, to, uh, this will have, uh, so this would be callback, this passed through two layers to be changed. Uh, and then we toss a test component two here with data is data and callback is uh, set data. And then we hop over here. When I change this, this function is still changing the parent state. So this message also changes. Um, and then this one is uh, is also changing that parent state. So, so it, it can't, it cannot like skip over. Yeah. Uh, um, unless you're using something like Zustand or React Redux I, to. I see, I see. Okay. Yeah. Now, now it all um, makes sense. Yeah. That, that, that seems horrible, actually. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Okay, if you're only like using uh, like. Uh, regular React JS making big yeah. applications seems a little bit, you know. If you're doing anything complicated, you really, really want application state management. Yeah. Um, a uh, view, which is uh, it's, it's just another front end library like React, um, actually kind of inverts that hierarchy of control in ways um, by having uh, something called signals. So a component can emit a signal to its parent component. And so you can pass the information down the tree uh, to, or like you can pass information to a component, but then you can have a, a signal that emits when that changes and make decisions on what to do with that data. Uh, and it's honestly super cool, um, but can lead to some other uh, wild uh, um uh wild changes uh, or wild things um like one second um i have a little hobbyist project that uh is here okay uh ooh, wow that is uh that is very small um and this this hobbyist project has some uh some serious uh uh, go in it. Um, for example, there, there's this one function here that has two while loops in it uh, to solve something. So, um, but here, so uh, an example here is like I've got this ship component, and whenever a the data for that ship changes, I have a function that I run up here that changes that data. Um, and uh, honestly, it's like it's a really cool inversion of uh, of how that works. Um, so, like, yeah, I've got this this helper function here that uh, that updates a ship property and that actually emits the uh, uh, the event and everything. Um, so, even though the application um, has its data basically controlled by the root component, um, I can I can interact with sliders and change uh, change values in this child component, and it'll just say, "Hey, this thing changed here. Please change it in your uh, in your application state." Um, also, uh, for the record, uh, this is Pinia, which is what I called Zistand accidentally the first time. Um, so, <laughs> uh, Pinia is great. I love it. Um, yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. Really. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, oh, also, did I actually, uh, did I actually commit those changes? <laughs> um, I did not. One second. So, 
get a dot, git commit dash m, uh, demo book app completed, and then git push. Cool. So I have one last question. Yeah. And if, if I go in and I do this project and I have questions, do can I email you? Um, yeah, uh, also or somehow contacted through some app. Um, okay, so there are a handful of ways to um, to uh, um, to ask me questions. Honestly, the best one is emailing me. Um, uh, if you're a student, I'm always on the uh, the four geek slack, but um, the uh the the email that i use for business uh, i just tossed in the uh in the google meet chat so Thank you. um yeah um i can't promise that i'll get back to you right away but i will as soon as i um uh i'm like it, I, I, like if i'm if i'm not <laughs> if i'm not home i probably won't respond until i get back so um but yeah Cool. Um, at this point, uh, one last round of questions, and then, or if uh, unless you guys have no more, and then I can pass it back to uh, um, to Isaiah, or I can just pass it back to Isaiah. Yeah. Or, uh... <laughs> all right. Well, I hope I hope this was a, a taste for you all what you can expect at Four Geeks Academy. A, lectures like this are are run of the mill, right? Like. Yeah. We do these all the time, and if you're looking for that extended support, Smith, uh, you know where to go. You know where to go. Yeah. It's the the Four Geeks community is always on. So, as an example, like what you could expect, say Shane, right? He's a very busy guy. He just did this lecture. He's about to go to sleep or or go wherever he needs to go. But twenty four seven, we have a public support, full stack kind of a Slack channel where you'd be able to interact with anybody. Who, who knows the answer, whether they be a student, a teacher, a mentor, or whatever the case. And yeah, so I just want you guys to know this resource exists. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the lecture. I know I did. Uh, there was points where I was like, wait, wait hold on, what's going on? <laughs> Shane was going, he's a monster. Yeah. So it's great to learn from the best. And uh, I'm glad you all attended. This, this video will be uploaded on the YouTube. I shared the link with you all. Um, I, it's still pinned, I think. Yeah. And, uh, cat. Oh. <laughs> What's your cat's name? Um, I've got two cats. The fluffy one that was sitting over here. Uh, her name is Griselle. Uh, this little jerk is named Sombra, uh, and she just uh, knocked my thankfully empty uh, coffee mug off the desk. Coffee at this time, brother? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Oh, I, okay. I just, uh, I hadn't, uh, I hadn't tossed it in the dishwasher yet. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, guys. Uh, four geeks. Uh, I, I teach for four geeks. Um, most of our classes are less luxury than this, um, but and more hands on. So it's worth uh, it's worth checking out. We've got a lot of projects uh, that you can check out on our website. Um, yeah. Awesome. Uh -oh. You all take care. Have a good night. Thanks a lot. Uh, I learned a lot, and I appreciate you guys. Uh, you guys' hard work. Yeah. Of course. Thank you. Bye-bye.